Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, we should be here today for the Simplex IT Office webinar. Uh, I'm Caddy Smirk and today we're going to talk about um, Excel. We'll go over sorting, grouping, and filtering in Excel. Um, so I wanted to call this webinar Advanced List Management, but <laughs> I was afraid that that wouldn't uh, make sense and it wouldn't go into enough detail of what we were actually talking about. So it's pretty descriptive here. We're just going to talk about sorting, grouping, and filtering um, and, and what we can and can't uh, sort, group, and filter on. Um, just a couple slides to get us started, and then we'll get into the demo. Uh, you know me, I don't like uh, slides any more than the next person. So um, this slide we like to call our NASCAR slide. It's just all the companies that we uh, partner with to to bring you the best uh, IT. Um, and services from Simplex IT um, is our next slide. This slide shows you all the services that we have here at Simplex IT. You're probably familiar with just the Simplex IT, which is um, our managed service provider uh, services. We also have a co-managed IT services that we're just starting up. Uh, actually, we've been doing it for a while. We're just starting to formalize it uh, as an offering. Uh, we've got our DBA offering and PM offering, and very new, uh, we just announced at the beginning of the year, is we're um, going to be offering training. Um, so this training is, is mostly IT focused, however, there's a lot of other um, uh, topics as well. So uh, the training is actually broken into two sections, um, online training and instructor-led training. So the online training, um, I've sat through, I can't tell you how many online training uh, demos. And most of them are terrible. They'll put you to sleep. They're boring. They're you know you just click 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 and don't learn anything. Uh, these ones are fantastic. Uh, the company that we partnered with is very very good. They actually have an instructor um, talking to the camera with a student, and then they sort of pan over to the instructor's um, uh, screen and show you exactly what she's doing. Um, so it's very uh, conversational um, and easy to learn. I I love them, um, and I've <clears throat> I've been uh, reviewing them quite a bit. So these are great. And what I like especially about this uh, training is that there's um, all the office software, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all that stuff that we all want to learn. But they also offer um, different soft skill uh, topics like um, presentation skills and negotiation skills and things like that. Um, and then a number of uh, security topics. So um, just cybersecurity. Um, I think I saw one on um, active shooter situations. So of course, nobody likes to think about that happening, especially me. But um, I think that it's it's neat to have that training, just um, you know, in the worst case scenario. Um, and then in addition to that, we're also offering instructor led training. So um, in a previous life, before I was a project manager, <laughs> um, I was actually a software trainer as well. Um, so if this online training doesn't suit your needs. Um, if you've got an instance where you want to bring uh, a group of people together and do some training, um, or you need something one-on-one, -on -one, um, or you just want to customize you know, some content, um, we can work together on that um, and, and get through that training. So um, the last bullet point I have here is your place, our place, or cyberspace. So uh, basically, we have a training room here that we can use. Um, or I can come out to your location, um, or we can do it uh, virtually. So just like we're doing here, I would open up a Skype window. Um, you know, we'd be able to see each other's desktops and work through any issues you have. Um, what's really nice about this type of training is that we can use your actual files that you're using at work. Um, so if you've got a really complex Excel spreadsheet or a custom um, access database that you're using, uh, we won't um, need to, you know, use anything but that. So. Sometimes when you go to classroom style training centers, um, you know, you're, you're forced to use these example files and, and you have to kind of pretend to, to know what it's going to be like when you get back to the office and use your files. So in this case, we can actually use your stuff to, to, uh, for the training. Um, and again, it's one-on-one -on -one, um, or for a group of people. I would say probably no more than 12 to 14. That gets to be kind of um, the, the max there. Uh, for a group, so um, you look to hear more from us on that um, in the coming weeks and months here. Uh, we actually do have a webinar um, next month on February 6th here. Um, so, whoops. Ah. <laughs> uh, February 6th, um, we'll be talking about the, we're calling it Simplex TM for Train Me. So we'll be talking about that in, in more detail um, on February 6th. Uh, I jumped past a few here at the beginning of the um, uh, month of January. Here we have the webinar that you're attending now for Excel. 
Um, tomorrow, we'll be talking about protecting your company from data breaches. So we're actually partnering with WireNet, which is um, an organization uh, locally here in Northeast Ohio for manufacturing companies. Uh, we're partnering with them to bring them these um, custom-specific webinars to their members. And they were nice enough to let us open it up to whoever we wanted to invite as well. So um, if you just go out to our website, simplex-it.com, um, click on event calendar, and then you'll see for tomorrow this webinar topic. If you register on our website, we'll send you the connection information tomorrow because it will be different than all of our other uh, webinar connections. It's still a Skype session um, like you're attending right now. It's just a different link. Um, so that'll be really neat. Um, and then on January 16th, Bob will be presenting um, the three models of IT support. So uh, just as sort of a teaser there, um, he'll be talking about uh, internal IT, uh, managed services IT, and then kind of a combination of both. So if you've got some internal folks but you still need some outside help um, uh, or offload any of those activities, um, so he'll talk about uh, the three models of IT support um, in detail on the 16th. Um, and then on the 24th, this is really exciting. I'm very, <laughs> very much looking forward to this one. Um, you know, we do these lunchtime seminars. We've toyed with the name of them. Um, I couldn't come up with anything more creative than lunchtime seminar or lunch and learn, what have you. Um, but they're like a little networking. You come into um, our office, have some lunch, and learn something new. Um, this month, we're actually doing um, an intro to virtual reality and augmented reality. And we're having a guest speaker come in. Um, who has his own studio, um, who has his own VR and AR studio. Um, and he's not just going to talk about, you know, the cool toys that are out there, but how you can use it um, to, how you can use it in a business sense. Um, and just uh, a brief example, um, I think IKEA, I can't remember the name of what they have, but IKEA has an app where you can actually, you know, if you pick out a sofa from IKEA, you can see what it looks like in your living room or what have you. Some of the lighting companies have the same thing. So there's a number of different ways that you can incorporate virtual reality and augmented reality into uh, your business. So he'll be here talking to us about that. And then, of course, he'll still bring all of his cool toys <laughs> for us to experiment with at the end. So uh, stop out and see us for that. Uh, if you're local to the Northeast Ohio area, uh, we're in Stowe right off of Route 91. Very easy to find. Um, lunch lunchtime seminar uh, will usually start around 11.30 or so, and we try to wrap up around 1. Um, like I said, we'll be talking about the new training service on, on February 6th. February 20th, we have another webinar. Bob will be talking about uh, cyber insurance, um, why you need it, how to get it. And then um, a little teaser out here on April 11th, we're very excited. Our next lunchtime seminar, we do them quarterly, so the next one is in April. Um, we're actually having a guest speaker from Amazon come in and talk about the uh, Alexa products. Um, so I'm sure he'll bring some <laughs> some more cool toys for us to play with um, and uh, and be able to talk to us about um, about those products. So that's very exciting. Uh, if you like this webinar or if you're interested in seeing other webinars, I put our YouTube uh, URL out there for you. Um, there's uh, hundreds of, of videos out there um, that you can take a look at from topics that we've done in the past. All right, um, this slide does not surprise me at all because there's a typo, so you know that I did it. Um, you know, if you've sat through any of my webinars or received an email from me, you'll know that I am the worst typist ever. Uh, when I was a know-it-all teenager in high school sitting through typing class, I didn't think that, or I didn't want to take it seriously because I thought, eh, I'm not going to need to know how to type when I grow up. <laughs> and now, now look at but this the predicament I've gotten myself into. So I try to catch them, but usually there's there's one that slips by. Um, all right, so today we'll talk about um, sorting, grouping, and uh, filtering in Excel. Um, some of this might be review for you a little bit, um, and if it is, just bear with me. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat window. Uh, I did mute everybody's uh, microphones just to cut down on the background noise, um, but certainly if you have a question and you want me to unmute you, I can, or if you just want to type the question in the conversation window, I'll try to keep an eye on that uh, window as I'm talking here. Um, all right, so this is a just a sample um, spreadsheet that I came up with. Um, I pulled some data from a couple different places, but um, I have a, a listing of, let's say, companies, um, city, state, zip code, address information, um, a description, metro area that they're in, and then 
I just created a column called number because I wanted to come up with something that I could um, sort on. So think of it as like, I don't know, um, maybe revenue or amount spent or uh, number of employees or <laughs> what have you. Uh, but just there's some number that we want to sort on. Um, let's call it uh, revenue. All right. Um, so the first thing I want to do is show you auto sort. An auto sort is uh, really neat because it's quick and easy, and you've probably seen it before. So let me just show you auto sort very quickly. I'm just going to select any cell within uh, my list here. And then in the toolbar up at the top, or the ribbon, I should say, um, in the data tab, you have your um, sort options, and then you have filter. And I'm just going to click on filter. And you'll notice that these little drop-down filters appear for each um, column. And so this is called auto filter because it happens automatically. Um, and here I can use these filters, these little drop-downs, to select the information that I want to see. And it, it creates this drop-down based on whatever is in your list. Um, so let's say that I just want to look at um, cities. I just want to look at Stowe. We're located in Stowe. I just want to look at um, the other uh, locations here in Stowe that we have uh, listed here. So I'm just going to, um, I don't know if you caught that very quickly, I just um, clicked on select all so that it was unselected or deselected and then I scroll down to Stowe and I'm just going to select Stowe and I'll click OK and then here you'll see that the cities that are or the uh, entries that are from Stowe are listed here and everything else is hidden. And there's a couple different ways that you know that that filter worked. Um, one is there's a significantly less <laughs> amount of um, or fewer uh, companies listed here. Uh, also, you'll notice that the numbers of the ones that met the filter criteria, those are in blue. So very quickly, if you look over at the far left of your spreadsheet, you can see that you have an auto filter that's active because you've got some blue uh, numbers here. If you want to turn that filter off, if you want to see everything again, you just expand at the drop down and click select all again. And as long as they're all selected, they'll all show here. If you want to see multiple cities, then again, deselect them. It'll always default to have them all selected. So if you deselect, click on the cities that you want to view. and click OK. And then you'll notice that all the cities that I had selected are listed here. And you know that it worked because, like I said, you see the blue and you see that there are fewer uh, entries than what there were before. Also, um, you'll notice up at the top the filter, the little drop-down icon changes. So instead of the downward pointing arrow, you have the, the icon that looks like a little filter. I tend to think the numbers jump out jump out at me more than the than the icon does, but that's another way to, to see that you've got a filter set up. Okay. Let's say that you want to see. Um, let me turn this off. I'm just going to select all of them so I can see all of them. Uh, let's say that you want to filter in on um, one of the metro areas. Well. No, I take that back. Let's say you want to uh, filter in on one of the descriptions. So let's say I'll click on this downward pointing arrow here for description, and I will deselect them all. And I'll just pick one. Hopefully there's more than one there. Good, there is. <laughs> I was afraid that there would only be one. Um, so here I can see all of my uh, chemical manufacturers. And then if I wanted to see all the chemical manufacturers in Cleveland, I could leave this one filtered in. So I'll leave it as chemical manufacturers filtered. And then I'm going to come over here to metro area or city. It doesn't matter. Um, it, metro area in this example is a little bit broader. Um, but let's say that I really only wanted uh, the manufacturers uh, within the Cleveland city limits. Then I would come over to city and select Cleveland. 
And so you can have more than one filter going on at a time. If you've got a lot of these filters, you don't have to go through them individually and select all um, to get them back. You can just come up here to the ribbon and click clear, and that will clear your filter um, selections. So that'll bring them all back. All right, so filtering um, filters out the information that you don't want to see. So don't want to see it, hit filter, it lets you zero in on the information that you do want to see. Um, be careful when you have filters on. Um, oftentimes I've noticed that if I have a filter set, uh, that was a bad selection. <laughs> it only showed me one. Um, all right, let's try this one. Oftentimes I've noticed that when I have a filter set, um, if I try to select, um, let's say that I want to copy and paste this into its own spreadsheet, sometimes it will select all of the rows. So even though the, the rows aren't appearing here, um, it still will select them because they're really just hidden. They just don't meet the filter criteria, but they're still there. Um, so for example, I just selected everything. I'll do a quick copy and notice I have um, you know, 929 and 1101. Um, maybe we'll just look at these zip codes, 727 and 328. Um, if I wanted to paste that into another tab, oh, I just took the first one. Um, oh, there we go. Um, Yeah. Okay, so that time it worked. I don't know what I what I do differently, but just keep an eye on it because sometimes um, I'll do that. I'll filter in on the list and think, okay, this is the list that I want. I'm going to copy and paste it into a new tab so I can work with just that list, and then I end up getting all of them back again. So it may be that I um, kind of just clicked and dragged on the uh, individual rows to select them, and maybe I needed to select the entire um, the entire sheet, or vice versa. Um, but I say that just just to to throw a, a cautionary word out there for you. Um, all right, so that was auto filter. That's probably the easiest one of them all, and I, you may have seen that already. Um, auto filter is nice um, because you don't have to do anything. So I like things that <laughs> are automatic for me. Um, I'm just going to remove all of the the filter criteria by clicking clear and I'm back to where I started from. Now you can leave this auto filter on all the time. It doesn't harm anything just to have the, the filter sitting out there. But if it gets in your way or it's annoying you, you can turn it off just the same way we turned it on um, by clicking that filter button um, in the ribbon up at the top. Just remember you do have to have a cell selected. Just now I had a cell, um, just this blank cell kind of off in the middle of nowhere selected when I tried to turn my filter on and I got this message. So it doesn't recognize that I want the filter in this list unless you click in that list somewhere. So click in that list somewhere, click on filter, and your drop-down arrows will come back for you. Um, the other uh, thing that I wanted to show you was sorting. Um, so sorting is uh, pretty easy in Excel, but it can get pretty powerful. Um, so if I wanted to sort in Excel, uh, quick and easy way, uh, I'll show you first, is to just select a cell uh, within the column that you want to sort by. So if I wanted to sort by city, I would select any one of these, it doesn't matter. And I would click the little A to Z button for ascending to descending. Okay. And that counts for ascending to descending um, numerical values or A to Z. So if you've got text in there, it'll sort A to Z. If you've got numbers in there, it'll sort um, you know, from lowest to highest. Um, so here you can see that it's sorted um, by Akron, but they're all here. They're all still here, and none of them are hidden like what they were in the filter. So that's just the, the auto sort. Um, if you wanted it the other way, the Z to A, you just click on the Z to A button. Very, very similar. If you need something a little bit more advanced than that, let's say that you 
you know, you want it sorted by city, but then also for the larger cities, you want it sorted by zip code as well. Well, if you sort by city, and then you come over here to zip code and sort by zip code, it sorts the entire spreadsheet by zip code. It doesn't do it within the city. So in that case, that's probably a bad example. I'll use another one for the, <laughs> for the real one. Um, so in that case, let me go back. We'll just start over to Akron. Um, if you wanted to do two or three sorts um, all together, then I would click on the sort button. So that lets you, it opens up another window. It lets you get a little bit more detailed, a little bit more advanced uh, with your sorting. So in this case, let's say that I want to sort by city. Um, then, or I'm sorry, I want to sort by city. I'm going to sort on the values in the uh, cells. And I want to sort in ascending order. That's fine. And then within each city, I want to sort by the primary description. So here I need to add a level. I'm just going to click on this Add Level button. I'm going to add a level. And then where it says Then By, I'm going to select my primary description. I can sort on values. And A to Z is fine. I like it in ascending order. Okay. Let's leave it like that, and I'll click OK. And now you'll notice for each city, my primary description is in alphabetical order. So you should see A to Z for Akron. And then down here when Alliance starts up, I have abrasive products. So it's going to start again from A to Z for Alliance. And same thing for Apple Creek and so on. All right, so if I wanted to go back to my sort, I can just click on one cell. I accidentally had uh, multiple cells selected, but I just click on one cell. And here you can see the sort again. Um, if I change my mind and I say, OK, I like it sorted by city, but now I want it sorted by revenue, Click OK. And then you'll notice that it changes by revenue. So here I've got Apple Creek. These are all my Apple Creeks. And I've got lowest to highest revenue. Uh, one thing I did want to mention in sorting um, is you'll notice that when we sorted by column and I said sort on, I just wanted to sort on the values within the cell. Uh, but you also have cell color, font color, and then an icon within the cell. So let's say that you, um, for whatever reason, you had a spreadsheet that had um, you know, some entries in blue and some entries in red. You can actually sort on the color of the font or the color of the cell. Uh, if you go through and maybe highlight um, cells in yellow or what have you, you can change the the. Um, sort order of your spreadsheet based on the color of those cells. All right. The last thing that I wanted to show you then was grouping. And with grouping, we can also do subtotaling. So um, I'll show you subtotaling here within the group. Um, within, when you subtotal, the most important thing to remember when subtotaling is to pre-sort your list the way that you want to do your subtotals. So for example, I want to subtotal by city. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I'm sorting by city. So I'm just going to select here um, in my city column, and I'll just do an A to Z sort. Okay. So now that I've sorted by the city, if I come up to my ribbon, I'm still in that data tab, um, and click on subtotal. My subtotal window pops up. In the background, my entire list is highlighted. I didn't have to do that. I just had to have one cell selected. Um, and here, um, this makes sense if you read through it carefully. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets a little confusing. But here, you're saying at each change in what? In which column? So at each change in city. Every time a city changes, I want to 
um, do what? Do what mathematical function? I'm going to say count. I want to see how many people I have in Akron, Alliance, Apple Creek, what have you. So I'm going to say every time the city changes, show me a count of, um, it doesn't matter, city is fine. Um, any one of these would be fine because count, it's just going to count how many there are. If I were subtotaling a number, then I'd be much more careful uh, which ones I was adding up. So here I'm going to say count at each time the city changes, show me a count of the city. Click OK. Let Excel work its magic for a minute. it doesn't take this long. I just tested it before the webinar and it worked in about two seconds. So I leave this up to the the, <laughs> the uh, trials of having live webinars. Things don't always uh, work exactly as you have tested and planned for. Um, but what it's going to do is for each time that city changes, just like we said, it's going to add a count um, at the end. So you'll see Akron, and then however many there are for Akron, let's say 30 or 31, um, and then Alliance, and you'll see a count of those. And, and that count works the same way as the, um, or I should say the other ones work the same way as the count does. So uh, if I wanted a subtotal of revenue by each city, I could do that. Or a subtotal of um, uh, revenue by uh, primary description, I could do that too. And the more columns you have, the more advanced you can get with this. So if you had, um, you know, several columns of numbers that you wanted to subtotal by a specific column, uh, you could do that as well. It looks like it's about halfway done down here. I'm really surprised this is going so slow. Usually it only takes a second, but um, now I'm curious to see if it's going to finish <laughs> since it's so close. Um, but just to recap what I did, I just had one cell selected within the list, and then I went up and clicked on subtotal in the data tab, and I filled out that window that popped up with the criteria that I wanted. So the, the thing that's always the trickiest is the... Um, the change in. So basically just think of it as, it as, you know, which column do I want to subtotal by? Do I want to subtotal by city? Do I want to subtotal by description, by metro area, um, or count, or, you know, whatever, whatever function you choose. Uh, while this is chugging away, just one other word of caution. Whenever you're doing anything with lists, whether it's sorting, grouping, filtering, whatever, subtotaling, uh, be sure to have just one cell selected within your list and make sure that your list is continuous. So, for example, if I had, I can't scroll because I'm totally locked up because this is working now, um, <laughs> but uh, let's pretend that I had a blank line in here. You know, I had maybe 10 Akron's and then I had a blank row. If I just have one cell selected, within that group above the blank row, it doesn't necessarily always know that that list continues below the blank row. So Excel is just going and, and it, it recognizes what cell you have selected and it just selects the other continuous cells. Um, and, and that works the opposite way too. So, you know, if you've got, if, you know, let's say that I had this grouped by month or something, um, if I wanted to keep them separate, you would always put in a blank row um, just to keep them separate. Now you could select all of the cells, you know, click and drag to select all of them, but the downside to that is if you've got a large spreadsheet, then you're sitting there waiting forever for it to scroll and select, um, and you have to always remember to, you know, to do that. Um, so it is nice if you do have a continuous list where you can just click once within the list um, and have it auto-select. If you forget to do that um, and you click off, you know, off to the side like I did earlier, it'll usually pop up and remind you. The thing that you do not want to do is select cells within the list. So a lot of times people will say, oh, Patty, I want to sort by city, so I'm just going to select all the cities. If you do that, 
the sort will only sort the city field. And what happens then with the other cities don't get sorted or the other columns don't get sorted with the city, everything gets mismatched and jumbled up. Okay? And that's the worst part about sorting and this is the scariest part. So I always say, you know, have one big continuous list and just have one cell selected within that list. Okay. Now you can see my subtotal finally worked. Uh, so let's scroll down here and see what it looks like. The subtotal feature um, put in these this little one, two, three over here to the side and this little minus sign. And here you can see it says Akron count and 78 and Alliance count and 19. So it's counting and it's also incorporating the value from this field um, into the, the title here. Okay. Now these minus signs let me expand and collapse each group. So here I can condense them for a quick summary report. Okay. Now I've got a lot of cities here and I don't want to do that all manually. I don't want to click on every single minus sign. So I'm just going to come up here and click on the little number 2. And the number 2 shows me my subtotals. Number three shows me all of my detail. Two shows me just my subtotals. And one shows me just my grand total. So really quick and easy way to make a summary um, report if you need to. Now remember when you're sorting, the one thing I said don't do um, when, you know before I had the the screen when it was sort of locked up working on that. Uh, remember just to click in one cell um, and let Excel find all of the connected connected cells. Let it find your list. Um, what you don't want to do is select you know something like this and say oh I want to sort by zip code so I'm going to select the zip codes because that will it just sorts the zip code and it won't bring the other data with it. Usually you'll get an error message or not an error message but a warning that will pop up and say you know, you've got data next to the cells that you've selected and it won't be sorted. What do you want to do? So that's your, your key indicator to, to go back and either select everything or just select one cell. All right. Um, well, that's all that I wanted to show you today, sorting, filtering, and grouping with the subtotals. All right. That concludes our webinar. Thanks, everyone. Bye.